Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic, and today we are back on the Melty Brain. Uh, so between episodes, I sat down and actually installed the sensor that I talked about at the end of the last video. If you haven't seen that, link will be in the description down below. Uh, but this is the magnet sensor. It's now detecting uh, two magnets per rotation of the wheel. And by using stronger magnets and also by rejigging the wiring just a little bit, it can sense uh, when those magnets come past. Uh, even though in that little clip you just saw it didn't because I've got the multi turned off right now because uh, I don't really like having this thing on when I don't have some kind of shield between me and it even though uh, it can't get away because it's up on blocks. These wheels being YOLO drive can spin exceedingly fast uh, and I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, they're not going to lose magnets and that type of thing. So we're being as safe as possible here. Anyway, with the sensor in place, uh, it was time to do some spin-up testing. So I've done some spin-up testing already and the first test went a bit like this. Yeah, that wasn't good. It was promising, but not good. So basically the problem was, and I, you couldn't really see this because I wasn't really in frame, but I was sitting there adjusting my little uh, light heading adjuster and it was doing absolutely nothing. The robot was staying with three heading lights on at all times, which means that the robot is thinking it's going like three times faster than it actually is, which is kind of weird to be perfectly honest. Uh, but, Regardless of the speed that I set the robot to, those three heading lights maintained, which meant that uh, the sensor is giving us consistent values, it's just a consistently wrong value. Uh, so, I rejigged my code a little bit uh, just to make sure that my heading light control is actually working and tested again. So that is so much better. Uh, it's a little bit skittery from here, like every now and again, but I can actually get it to a point where the heading stays relatively stationary. Uh, and there's even one little bit in there where the heading was sitting here and it drifted off this way and then it kind of snapped back, which was a little bit weird, I thought, but hey, look, I'm not gonna complain too much. This thing is actually starting to work and give me an accurate heading, which, ah, oh, yes, so happy about that. Now, there is different things I can be doing to get heading, like IR beacons and accelerometers, and I've also got a plan for a different sensor, which we'll talk about in a later video, because it's gonna be a whole build process to get that into this thing. Uh, but I'm going for that extra sensor because I have a feeling it's gonna scale better going up into feathers and then to the heavies. Stuff like IR beacons aren't really gonna scale all that well uh, going up into those other weight classes. And accelerometers, A, I don't really like them, and B, you're always gonna need to have them inside kind of this amount of radius, uh, because otherwise you just saturate the sensor really, really quickly. So 
uh, yeah, I, I envisioned the heavyweight version having a hole through the middle that I can look through, but if I have to mount the sensor right up close into that, then, you know, I've only got a hole the same size as this, which gets a bit pointless, I guess. Uh, anyway, now that we have the heading actually being a heading and rather than just kind of spinning around all over the robot, uh, it is time to actually get this thing to translate around the place. Now, the translation itself isn't all that difficult. The hardest part is actually doing the stick mixing. So we are going to uh, jump in here and we're gonna do the stick mixing together. And then from there, I will code that up and we can actually have a look at how it works uh, in the actual robot. So we need to turn movement of this stick into a heading of some form. So basically we need to convert these values, which are from minus 100 to 100 uh, in both sticks. We need to convert this into a zero round to 360 going through 90 and 180 and 270 and all that good stuff. Uh, so the way I see this working, we need eight different variations or different calculation points to do this. So what I mean by that is we are going to make up a grid. So here's our grid. We've got our left and right stick and our forwards and backwards stick. And this is 100 and this is 100 and this is minus 100 and this is minus 100 like that. So our stick can be anywhere inside this square essentially. Uh, and we need to be able to work out what the heading is for that. So I said there are eight different quadrants because I feel like we've got one narrow band down here, which is our dead band left and right. So anywhere inside this band, we wanna go forwards towards 100 or towards zero. If we're kind of anywhere inside this band here, then this band, we wanna go backwards or towards 180. And then we've got a similar band running this way. So we've got a dead band again running in this direction. So in this case, we're going towards 90. In this case, we're going towards 270. So these are basically just little dead bands so that you know you don't have to be 100% accurate when you're pushing the stick forwards uh, to make sure that you're actually gonna go in the direction that you wanna go. Then from there, we've got four more zones. So we've got zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four. So zone, zone one is a forwards and backwards stick positive and left, right stick positive. And this ends up looking like this. So you have a value for your left forwards and uh, so your left and right stick, and you have a value for your um, forwards and backwards stick, and together those will give you a point, which actually that point should be there. And then you need this angle, and then you need to add that angle. Well, it will just be that angle, right? It will be zero degrees plus this little angle in here. Now we know our because uh, we've got a little right angle triangle here. Uh, so we know our opposite and our adjacent. Yes, so we know our opposite and adjacent, which means this is a tan angle. So, uh, so Katoa, which is the old uh, like maths trick from high school. Uh, so we need a tan opposite over uh, adjacent. So in this case, we need our left and right value over our forwards value, just like that. So this that tan gives us our direction that we need. So that's zone one, and then we're just gonna kinda copy this for zone two, but now we're going to have, so this is gonna be forward stick is a negative value, and left and right stick is a positive value. So this is our quadrant this way, minus 100, I should actually do this to make it easier. So again, you're gonna have a value for this stick and a value for this stick, and they're gonna join somewhere here. We're gonna create a line out to that. But in this case, it's gonna be 90 degrees. So the 90 degree mark plus this value. And again, we have our tan 
function here, but in this case, our opposite is our forward stick. So this is 90 plus 10 forward stick over left and right stick. So we can keep going with these, but this is the, the way that this goes. It's basically we need one of these for each quadrant, and then by having one of these for each quadrant, we can output a correct value for each version. Whoops, sorry, these should be arc tangents. Uh, so they're the inverse tangent, not the actual tangent. It's been a little while since I've done my trigonometry, apparently. Uh, and also here are the last two, zone three and zone four. So I was just coding these in and realized that I had made this mistake. So I thought I might as well uh, fix this up on camera for you guys. Uh, so that you can actually see what these are. So these are arctangent, and I'm using the arctangent2 function uh, in uh, the Arduino libraries that I'm using uh, to get all of this stuff to work. Anyway, I'm gonna get this all in, and let's hope that we can get this thing actually translating. It works! Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! It actually translates now. Well, a little bit. I mean, the heading is still a little bit like chaotic and all over the place, which does not help when you're trying to actually shoot across the arena, uh, which of course it's just a piece of wood in our case, but it does actually do that. You can get it to translate as long as you can get the heading relatively stable, which is kind of a combination of the speed of the melty and also that adjustment that I have built in. You can get that working and get it to shoot in a direction almost, uh, which is exciting. That's a good, good first step. I've got a lot of tuning and tweaking that I need to make. Uh, the sensor that I've put in, I've currently got it set up as an interrupt sensor, but I'm actually thinking that with how fast the Teensy is, it might actually be better as a busy weight thing because we can get a better, more accurate reading off of it because it does seem to double trigger a little bit uh, when a magnet goes past, which will cause weird readings and weird heading stuff. Um, but it's starting to work, which is huge and I am so, so happy. Um, yeah, like I said, there's a, that, there was a nice big push across the actual wood piece, which is, uh, yeah, the furthest it's moved on purpose, which is really nice. The other thing, I did have to stop the testing because uh, right towards the end there, I was attempting to get it to move while the heading light wasn't pointing in a direction and it was kind of causing some weird vibrations and it threw a magnet directly at my face. Thankfully, there was a polycarbonate between me and the robot, so no harm, no foul, everything was fine. I was also wearing safety glasses too because I really didn't want anything flying off this thing and hitting me. It is scary quick when it gets up and running. Uh, but yeah, so we need to attach the magnets better for one. Uh, we need to use the sensor data better for another one uh, and kind of get rid of some noise out of that sensor data as well. All of that together is going to help things out. Uh, the robot is pretty balanced right now. In actual fact, it's the best balanced it's ever been. Uh, I do still want to balance it uh, in the this way round. Uh, yeah, along the axis of the wheels, just because at the moment I don't know that it's quite there and it does still jitter a little bit. But this thing has been a work in progress this whole way through and we're starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel, which is really, really cool. Uh, so I think a lot of that tweaking and changing I'm gonna do off camera and just try and get this as good as it can be in this current system set up. Uh, but then we'll add that other sensor in a future video and hopefully that will work pretty well. 
Uh, also, I did weigh this thing. It's currently sitting at about 800 grams, so we've got 500-ish grams to add weapons and everything to it. Uh, but of course, yeah, we also have to condense all of our electronics and you know make everything fit. So I'm sure there'll be weight savings in here at some point in the future. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next one.